Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and welcome to another episode of Truth Hunters, because then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And it is a lovely, lovely day, praise the Lord, here in Dayton, Ohio. It has been quite lovely, actually, for about a week now. Sunny and cooler temperatures, cool enough that you can open your windows, but warm enough that you can still wear a t-shirt and you would not want to wear long sleeves or you would sweat but it's just a nice cool breeze so it's been quite lovely and that is just a blessing because i love to open up my windows and get fresh air in the house as opposed to the air conditioning so we may have a little bit of noise it sounds like someone is four-wheeling in a neighborhood way across the soy field so it's very loud so you may hear that I don't know if the mic will pick it up or not but glory to God I've got an awesome message for you today and it's very important actually because it's a passage that I see a lot of people posting and I even see videos on it ever since this whole ordeal has happened with the virus and it is Psalm 91 so Psalm 91 is the prayer of protection okay mostly from plagues and a lot of people are praying it watching videos on it and that's all well and good however there are some very important things in psalm 91 that many of us overlook their instructions that if you want this protection there are three things technically four but the fourth thing is dependent on the three things that you must do and most of us have this mentality uh, we just want God to do everything and we don't have to do anything and that is so untrue if you read the Bible you will see that so we have reached a point in time where we need God's protection more than ever and my friends it is going to get worse so we desperately need his protection and if we want to ensure we have his protection we need to follow the instructions he has given us in our instruction manual our user's manual which is the Holy Bible so as I was studying the Bible last night it was impressed upon me to share this with you go over it with you make sure that you understand and there's just so many scriptures that give us instructions and we are not taught by people who are teaching God's Word about that we're just taught to name it and claim it and do all these things and we can have it who cares if it's not God's will you're gonna have it and that is unbiblical okay so if it's his will for you to be protected because we all have an appointed time unless we're here by the time Jesus returns we all have an appointed time in which it is our last time on this earth whether we're taken out of here supernaturally or we take our last breath so everything is up to God's will I can assure you however if you're not following his instructions and you're not having faith that the chances of something happening to you or you get the virus or a virus or a plague is higher if you're not obeying him so if you want to go ahead and get the Word of God out and turn it to Psalm 91 you can do that or you can just listen and watch as I share this with you it's really up to you we're going to read it and then I'm gonna go over what those things are that we need to be doing if we want God's protection 
Now, someone sent me a Bible in my post office box, and I thanked them in a previous video, but just in case they missed it, thank you. And I'm reading from it. I usually read out of the NASB, but I'm reading from this one because it is large print and it's easier for me to see. And I think it's NRSV. I'm not really familiar with that one. So let's go ahead and turn to Psalm 91. Are you ready? All right, I'm giving you an extra second. Okay. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. You will not fear it. You will not fear it. That's not one of the instructions. Okay, however, it is something that is very important as you're claiming God's protection. Okay, you will not fear. But we're going to find out why you will not fear it and how it is that you are going to have God's protection so that you can rest assured that you don't need to worry yourself or have anxiety or anything like that. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. Now make note, there's point number one. Make the Lord your refuge, your dwelling place. That's the first point. We're going to find out how to do that in just a moment. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Now get ready because here's instruction number two. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. And instruction number three. Okay, to love him, love God, those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. So love him and know his name. So, so far, make God your dwelling place. Love him and know his name. When they call to me, I will answer them. And there's number four, which is something that we are instructed to do after we have done one through three. Call to him. Call upon the name of the Lord. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. All right. Wow. So we can be protected and have peace of mind and safety and just know that God has our back at all times. But we must dwell in his presence, we must love him, and we must know his name and then call upon him. All right, so how do we do those things? What does that mean? What does it mean, know his name? Does that mean we say Jesus or Yahushua or whatever, like some people think? No. Well, does that mean I have to call upon a specific name for the Lord? El Shaddai, God, I am, the great I am, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord, Elohim. What am I supposed to say? No, it, that is not what it means. I'm going to tell you what it means. So stick with me. We're going to go over these four things. So verse nine, it said, make God your dwelling place. Well, what does it mean to make God our dwelling place? 
obey him, praise and worship him, pray, listen, be still and know that I am God, feed on the word of God, repent and follow Jesus even during trial and tribulation and suffering. Do not live in sin. In other words, repent, as I've just said. Seek his will, have faith, and fear only God. So we are to have the fear of the Lord, which is deep reverence and respect. We are to believe, have faith, because the Bible says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Seek his will. Because there is a passage, James chapter 4, verse 3, sometimes we ask amiss. In other words, we don't ask with the right mindset. Let me just give you an example. James 4, 3, you ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures, right? We are always to seek God's will. So this is how we can make sure that we make God our dwelling place. All right, how do we love God? Well, this one's very simple because Jesus who said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. He said, if you love me, obey me. Some translations say, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you love me, obey me or keep my commandments. So if you love God, obey him. All right, so obedience, which was also mentioned in point number one, how do you make God your dwelling place? So making God your dwelling place kind of entails all of these things together. So what does it mean to know his name so that I can call upon him and he will protect me and help me? To know his name is very, very, very simple. It's not about an actual name like you think. It's about knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You see, there's the apostates who aren't following the real Jesus nor are they looking into the real word of God. The word of God for them has been corrupted, okay? It's a different gospel, so to speak. All right, so they follow a different Jesus, a different gospel, and not only that, it's not even the real Holy Spirit. It's a antichrist spirit. Some people call it kundalini. I call it the antichrist spirit. The kundalini is not in the Bible. That is a name given it because of where people feel it originated from, but it is an antichrist spirit. So those are people who don't really know his name because they're not truly saved. So if you are truly born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, okay, and you love the Lord by obeying him and you are in his presence, or in other words, you are making God your dwelling place, then what can you do? Ah, then you can cry out to God and he will deliver you and rescue you and protect you. So these things are very, very important. And I just want to read that scripture again, James 4, 3, because many of us ask for things that are not necessarily God's will. We just want to consume it on our lust. So people who pray, Lord, let me win the lottery. That's a great example of what it means when it says that we ask amiss because we want to consume it on our lust. Asking God to let you win the lottery is asking amiss to begin with because playing the lottery is gambling, which is a sin. So that's a fine example. We're always to ask the Lord what his will is because the Bible also tells us that God's ways and our ways are nothing alike. And who can understand the mind of the Lord except for God? We surely can't because we are the flesh. And the flesh is completely different from the mind of God, which is not flesh. We are his servants. Now, if you don't believe me on any of the points that I have made, let me just remind you to open up your Bible and go to the words of Jesus Christ himself because he makes it clear what is involved in being a born-again believer and what it means to follow him. Okay, so Jesus makes it clear. Isn't it funny sometimes how we want all these things from God and we just expect so much from him and many of us want to do so little, so little for him. And he does make things so clear when we want answers to things he makes it so clear how 
we get answers to those prayers. You know, going back to the Bible, there's many people who had to fast and really, really suffer to get the answers to their prayers. But we just have this mentality that's been taught to us by the apostate church. Name it, claim it, you can have whatever you want. Pray for a jet, God will deliver a jet to your front door. Pray for a million dollars to pay a bill, God will deliver it in your hands. So we don't always know what God's will is. And it's very important that we pray for his will. And most of us, like I said, don't want to do anything to really do our part. We just want everything handed to us. We want spoon-fed Christianity. Everything must be handed to us because it's that easy. It is not that easy to be a true born-again follower of Jesus Christ. It really isn't. There are things that we have to do and there's suffering. You can read that in the Bible too. We've all been taught by the apostate church that a true Christian doesn't have to suffer. There's no suffering at all. And if you're suffering, you must be doing something wrong. But the Bible tells a different story. The Bible says as a true believer and follower of Jesus Christ that we will suffer. Just think about it. We are in a body of flesh here on this earth, on the devil's domain. Our citizenship is not of this world. Our citizenship is in heaven with Jesus Christ. So everything that our flesh wants to do, we cannot do. And we will have powers of hell come up against us in various ways in our life, whether it be through people, circumstances, situations, sickness, disease, whatever, the enemy will come against us. And that is just very matter of fact, plainly shown to us in God's word. So the word of God makes it clear that as Christians living in a world that belongs to the kingdom of hell until Jesus comes back, we will suffer. The Bible tells us that. And that's one of the biggest reasons, my friends, that I keep pointing you toward the Holy Bible. And that is because I want you all to know the truth. And that's what Truth Hunters is about to speak the truth to you, to get you to really examine the scriptures for yourself. I'm not on here asking you to believe everything I say. In fact, I don't want you to believe everything I say. I don't want you to believe anything anyone says. Rather, I want you to search it in God's word for yourself, prayerfully, prayerfully, and pray for discernment and understanding. Ask him to open your eyes. Ask him for wisdom. The Bible tells us that if we ask him for wisdom, he will give it to us in abundance. But we must have faith when we ask, and we also must ask for understanding. So the Bible tells us all of these things, but we're too busy because we want spoon fed. And we just listen to what everybody else has to say, and we determine that sounds right from what I remember. That sounds good. Oh, I like that. It's really pumping me up. I'm on fire. Well, that fire you're feeling may not be the fire of the Holy Spirit. It may be the fire of that Antichrist Holy Spirit I told you about because it mimics the Holy Spirit. Like I said, many people call it the Kundalini. I call it an Antichrist Spirit. So it is not the Spirit of the Lord. And it can make you feel good too. You hear that stuff about being drunk in the Spirit, laughing in the Spirit. People acting like animals and beasts and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Do you honestly think the Holy Spirit would have people act that way? Where is this in the Bible? King David danced before the Lord. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's biblical. Dancing before the Lord, praising the Lord, playing music before the Lord, shaking your tambourine, the uh, harp and the timbrel and all those things, all perfectly biblical. There is nothing in the Bible about people barking like dogs or making Indian sounds or dancing provocatively, sensuously, which I've seen that before the Lord, just all sorts of crazy stuff. That is not the Holy Spirit or laughing out loud and disrupting the whole entire service and message. That is not of the Lord. If those things are of the Lord, and you want to argue it, feel free to, and then go find me the scripture where people were barking like dogs unless they were demon-possessed. 
a lot of the things you see where people do that are things demon possessed people did okay find me where jesus came and barked like a dog our example is jesus where did jesus bark like a dog or slither around like a snake or start laughing out loud or people would laugh out loud in fact there is a situation where a woman was following behind them and she kept calling out i can't remember what she was saying like jesus is the son of god or something and the lord rebuked her okay she was being a distraction right that's our example so we have a lot of really crazy crazy stuff that is heretical that is being taught in the church that is being taught as truth and people are eating it up and buying into it and they think this is truth and it's not truth you guys it's not that's why i want you to get into god's word and search the scriptures for yourself and if you really want to be courageous prayerfully read the book of revelation don't just read it study it and do word studies and it may take you tons of times of going through it to the point you may get frustrated until you get it but just read it over and over and over again prayerfully very prayerfully and ask god to open your eyes god doesn't will it to be a mystery to us he wants his people to understand but you're going to have to open your heart you're going to have to delete 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 all the teachings that you've ever been taught from your brain as you read it and let the holy spirit teach it to you because I've done just that and I can tell you most of the teachings being taught about the book of Revelation are false. There's truth mixed in it with heretical teachings, misunderstandings, misinterpretations, and so on and so forth. So you have to clear your mind totally of everything you've ever been taught about end times prophecy in the book of Revelation and go through it from chapter 1 verse 1 all the way to the very last chapter in the very last verse over and over and over and over again very prayerfully and god will reveal it to you i promise so i hope that this message has been a blessing to you it's time for us to start studying the scriptures you see if I just read Psalm 91 and I did not study Psalm 91, and if I studied Psalm 91 and did not pray first, I might not catch those four things that are written, that are instructions for us. And if you notice, the part where it says to call upon the Lord is at the very end after you've done those things. It's very clear, very concise, very to the point. It's not something that takes a genius it's not rocket science if you just take time to prayerfully study the word of god for yourself oh believe me once you do this you can't get enough trust me when the lord starts revealing things to you as you're reading you hunger for more and more it gets exciting it really does and wait until you see what the lord shows you in the book of revelation oh it is absolutely absolutely phenomenal phenomenal in fact it's absolutely beautiful. It's no longer this hideous, grotesque, fearsome, tormenting book like we think it is. It's actually absolutely beautiful at the time when the Lord does return for his people. At the sound of the last trumpet, it is absolutely amazingly symbolically beautiful bittersweet it really is bittersweet so i encourage you to go through it it is by far one of the most beautiful stories i've ever read once the lord really opened my eyes and showed me what it means so god bless all of you my prayer for you today is that you know the truth and that you open your heart and your mind to the voice of the holy spirit and that you search for yourself don't just believe what anyone tells you and that you can have peace in your heart and in your mind and in your soul no matter what's going on in the world or in your life no matter what you're suffering that you will have the peace and the love of jesus christ with you at all times one quick thing and then i want to pray i just want to remind all of you to download the free app 
for the free show for Truth Hunters. It is available for any Android or Apple device. Also for Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and there is also a web link. And the videos are shareable. You can also just listen to it as a podcast if you so desire. So get the free app today while there's still time. I'm always telling you, I don't know how long it'll be till you know YouTube decides to remove me from YouTube. So make sure you get the free app. And one more quick reminder, I am mostly 100% viewer supported. So if you feel led or moved to give a gift to the Lindley Oz ministry to help me continue bringing the truth to people all over the world, you can do so via my PayPal or my PO box. The information is scrolling across the bottom of the screen and it is hyperlinked in the video description. Also, you can share these videos and help me fight the censorship. Whether you can give or not, sharing is huge and I really appreciate it. So you can share the videos, tell people about the videos, pray for me, pray for this ministry, pray for my family, pray for our brothers and sisters all over the world, pray for our enemies, pray for the lost and unrepentant. Okay, don't forget to do that and pray for the government leaders of this world, not just your own nation but every nation. The Bible commands that we do that, whether we like the leaders or not, whether we know they're evil or not, the Bible tells us to do so. Well, I can't think of anything else, so why don't we go ahead and pray? And if you're driving, I don't advise you to bow your head first, just kind of pray along. And if you're watching this during the premiere with the live chat, I just wanna ask you very kindly if you can stop typing messages during this time because it's very disrespectful to the Lord as we're praying to do so. Thank you. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. Bless you, Father. You are God and there is none like you throughout all this earth. The word says so. And Father, we just thank you and praise you that you are with us. We thank you and praise you that you are our fortress. We thank you and praise you that you are our stronghold, Father, not just in the day of trouble, but at all times. We thank you and praise you that you are our steering wheel and not our spare tire. We thank you and we praise you that we will go out into all the world in whatever ways we possibly can, and we will teach the gospel and preach the message of Jesus Christ to everyone while there is still time. And Lord, I thank you and praise you that you just bless and touch and give strength to the afflicted, Father, and just be with them, Lord. Be with those who are suffering, Lord. Be with the needy, Lord, and provide for them. Be with the widows, Father, and be with those who have lost a loved one. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for everything. And Heavenly Father, continue leading us, guiding us, and walking us in your ways. Continue, Father, using our mouth to bless you and not to bring cursing to anyone or anything. Continue guarding our thoughts in our heart, Lord, and may they be pure before you at all times, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we just thank you and praise you, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much, everybody. God bless you, and just remember that time, time can be our friend, time can be our enemy, but time, time is very important. I said it in my last video or maybe it was the one before that one of my latest videos about how there's things we cannot go back and change or do over again however there is forgiveness from our Heavenly Father when we repent for our sins oh someday someday very soon all of our cares all of our trials all of our troubles they will all be gone there will be no more tears no more pain, no more suffering. We will be home with the Lord, at His feet, by His side, with Him at all times. And what a glorious, beautiful day that will be. Be encouraged because that is our hope. That is our promise. That is what we look to. We look to Jesus Christ and our redemption. And my friends, our redemption draws ever so near. God bless you.